Hello all, uh, my name is Bill Larkin and I'm a Managing uh, Director of uh, Workmates Hub and we're going to talk today about how to ensure HCM project success. So what are those steps that you go through um, that we recommend you go through to ensure project success? Um, I founded a company called Workmates Hub, which I'll talk about in a second. But the reason we founded this uh, firm was that we found that um, there, there's really no shortcut to doing an HCM project. It's, uh, and these projects that we're doing these days are all too important to our organization. And they really take a lot of due diligence and a lot of, um, uh, uh, a lot of uh, focus on our team's part to make sure we do these projects collect correctly. And the reality is that the HM projects are becoming increasingly complex. You know, business, cultural, global, societal changes have collectively exacerbated our need to manage the workforce and the difficulties thereof. So let me just talk a little bit about really quickly Workmates Hub and what we do. As I mentioned, we were founded under the um, certainty that the ease of finding these projects and doing finding consultants to do these projects and doing the projects in general really underserved most clients. Clients weren't getting what they needed out of these projects. They weren't uh, completely realizing, and this isn't all the time, but they were, uh, weren't realizing um, the value that they could get out of an individual human capital management project. So what we did is we found Workmates Hub, which is really a marketplace that you can start to put together your ideas, plan for the project. I'll talk about that in a little bit, how to do that. And we also have a network of consultants, vetted consultants. Um, that we have uh, created. So you can then go online and, and find the right consultant for your project. But really what Workmates Hub does for our clients is we help you plan through a trusted partner uh, for your project itself. And we're going to talk about some of the steps that we recommend you do when you do the planning for these projects. The planning is as important as anything. Our platform help you select uh, from a network of vetted consultants. Um, so you not only will plan correctly, get the right uh, requirements in place, but you will get to a vetted consultants and then manage to successful conclusion. Uh, how do you manage through these projects and what's that look like? So throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the presentation, if you have any questions at all, feel free to go to the chat section and we will do that. We are also recording this, so this will be available at a later date as well. So, um, and we can answer your questions afterwards too if you have some individual things that you'd like to uh, ask us. So let me start with what we wanna to try to cover today. So we're gonna talk about how do you prepare your internal project resources? What does that look like? And what do I need to do to prepare internal project resources? How do I clearly articulate my specific project needs to the outside world, particularly the external world of consultants and external experts? How do I articulate those needs to make sure that I'm doing the right thing? How do I define the consultant requirements? What consultant or expert am I really looking for and what do I need to do there? How do I cast a wide enough net in this consultant search to make sure that I give myself enough choices, enough options uh, to choose the right uh, consultant? And then how, how do I complete that vetting process and how do I go through the project itself to ensure the consultant or the experts align my projects in, in, in good shape and we get to a successful conclusion uh, down the road. So the first thing that we see that a lot of organizations um, don't spend, we believe, enough time doing is project preparation. You know, the old adage, uh, no one plans to fail, everyone just fails to plan. In project preparation for any HCM project is really, really important. In some of the steps uh, that we've seen organizations, and some of these, some organizations will need to do and some won't, but these are uh, certain steps that uh, you have to make sure you have some um, uh, form or fashion within your project. So the first one is to align your project with corporate executives. Where's the organization going? What's this project doing for my company? Why am I doing the project? What does that look like? We've, we used to say that we needed to align with corporate objectives, but we believe managing workforce is a corporate objective. The same as introducing new products, the same as moving into new geographies. Managing the workforce is really, really critical because without the workforce or without a really well-trained workforce paid correctly, the corporation um, is, uh, uh, doesn't work as well. So how do you do that? How do you align these projects with corporate objectives? 
The other one is to identify stakeholders and form your team. So who are the stakeholders within uh, my organization that need to be made aware of this? Certainly they're senior executives. We have to get some funding probably for our project. We have to make sure that, that those corporate objectives we did align with senior uh, stakeholders said that yes, that's in fact the case and we do get funding for our project. We're gonna cover that a little bit more in a second here. And then we need to form the team. Who are these other teams of people that need to be on this project. So there's all, always somebody from HR certainly on the project and or payroll or benefits. Some um, uh, folks in the functional area, but you also want to get IT people on the team probably. You probably want to get some finance people, certainly some business people. So, but it, whatever your project is, who are those stakeholders? Who's, who's going to be involved in making decisions? Who's going to be on the team? Who's going to be uh, responsible for this? Who's going to be accountable for this? Um, you know, who, who needs to be informed as we go throughout. So need to identify those uh, stakeholders as we go. Need to really understand uh, and plan for change impacts. So we're going to do a particular project and it's going to change something within our organization. We're going to buy new technology, for instance. Well, that's a change in and of itself. We're going to put new policy in place for diversity and inclusion. Well, that's a change to what we're doing today. So what are those impacts of change? What do they look like? And, and how do we um, go about making sure we manage through that change correctly? Who's gonna be changed? What are they gonna do? What, what's a change gonna to do to affect the way they do their job? How does that work and how does that look? We also need to create some type of decision or governance model. So uh, as we go throughout these projects, and I've been doing this for many, many years, and very infrequently is a project go without any hiccups, without any roadblocks. What do we do when we run against those? And, and what do we do when there's a decision to be made? What's that decision process? What's the governance model for this particular project? And how do we make sure we get through that? So these are some things that uh, you might or might not have in your project plan, but they're, they're really critical to do the preparation. And then we always recommend do your research. So if you're gonna do a compensation project, go out and Google it and, and read as much as you can about compensation projects, read as much as you can about the vendor community if you're gonna do a technology project or a global payroll project. Just do your researches and, and, and get yourself as smart as you possibly can before you really go out into the outside world to uh, look for help uh, with these particular projects. So project preparation, project planning is really, really important uh, to do um, and get you uh, a lot of the way there. In, in conjunction with that, it starts to get into this whole project workflow. So you see on the top of the screen, a workflow from one to six. So it's really important to start to really clearly articulate what your project is. So what type of project do I have? Is it a people and development project, planning and strategy, policy and culture, process and functional, technology and innovation? And underneath each of those five major categories, there's another 10 or 15 types of pro different types of projects that you might have. Uh, people in development could be, I'm looking for a new uh, learning management system, or I'm looking for a new way to train some uh, folks in one of my offices or one of my locations. Uh, planning and strategy is just that. How do I set the plan for what human capital management uh, service delivery model is gonna look like next year? And what does, what does that look like? Policy and culture, I talked about diversity and inclusion so on and so process and functional could be payroll. And of course, technology innovation. I'll just speak to technology innovation real qu quickly here because technology we think a lot of is vendor evaluation or vendor improvement, but we're seeing a lot more innovation come in, different types of technology, artificial intelligence. So the point in this uh, particular phase one project type is to really define what your project is in what type of project you're really trying to accomplish and use marketplace terms to identify that and what that looks like. So it's really important to identify what your project type is. The next thing, step two, as you see here, you want to start to put in your project overview. So first of all, the project type, we talked about that. So that could be whatever it is, a technology project, a, a policy and procedure project, whatever it is. A lot of our clients have uh, project names, so they'll give a meaningful title to this project. And sometimes that's an inspirational or an aspirational type uh, title for your project name, so people know what it is internally. 
So you're doing a vendor evaluation project. Well, maybe just call it that, you know, HCM vendor evaluation project. Or you could be uh, resetting all of the training for everybody. And you can make that inspirational, aspirational. So a project name internally really helps that, to identify what the project is and how you do it. Um, summary of projects. So what's the summary of the project itself? Well, how do you summarize this in your words? What does that look like? Um, are you, are you, what's your, what are you trying to accomplish with this project? Why are you doing this project? So what's the summary of what you're, what you're trying to uh, accomplish with the project? A little background on how you got to where you are today. So current state and challenges. For instance, I have an old piece of uh, technology that I've had in place for 10 years and it doesn't do everything we needed to do. Our business has grown or changed. So what's the background? How did your organization get to the place where you are today um, in the current state? And what are the challenges you seem to uh, be having today with this particular project you're doing, whatever the project might be? And of course, you always wanna have primary contact. Who, are the, who, the, who does the outside world contact? when they want to find out more about this particular project, consultants and general experts, or third party advisors, you know, who they contact in your organization. We recommend having one primary contact and anybody from outside your organization can only call that person and talk to that person for communication purposes, make sure that all of the, um, uh, all of the information going out to the marketplace is the same and that uh, the, the, the people out in the marketplace are getting the right information. So. An overview of the project is really, really important. This is step two. I'll just uh, review one more time. Project type. So really identify in, 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 um, in marketplace terms what type of project you're doing. Name it internally so people know what project you're talking about and what's happening. And if you want to make it aspirational or inspirational title, that's a good thing too because you get more people behind it. Remember, these projects are mostly about people regardless of what type of project you're doing. So get people excited about it, get people behind it. What's the summary of the project? What type of project are, are we doing? Why are we doing it? What's a little background? How do we get to where we are today as an organization? What are the challenges we're having? Of course, the uh, primary contact for, for the outside world. So you wanna drill down a little bit more in step three into objectives and deliverables. So what's the objectives to the to be state after the successful completion of the project? So I, I told the outside world what I really wanted to try to accomplish and, and how I wanted to try to accomplish that. Well, what are those objectives you're trying to get to when you get when you're done with this? What are what are the things that you really want to get to in this section, by the way, we recommend that you start to as you go out to the outside world, we recommend that you ask the uh, expert, a uh, third party expert or consultant or advisor to really be specific and articulate exactly what they're going to do for you to achieve these objectives. So what are the work steps they're going to go through? What are those things that they're going to do and what are the different steps they do to get to where you need to get to? What are the tasks involved in each one of those work steps? So, you know, your objective is to um, buy a new piece of technology. What are those work steps that the consultant's gonna to do to help you get to, to that technology selection? What are the tasks involved in each one of those work steps? What are they physically going to do for you? Uh, what, are they, what do they require you to do? What, how much time, effort, and uh, resources are gonna be required from you to do this particular project in each one of these work steps? What does that look like? And, and how long is this going to be? Is, is work step one a week? Is it two weeks? Is it a month? And each one of the work steps, what does that look like? So for each one of your objectives that you're trying to get, uh, make sure the consultants are able to articulate uh, the different um, objectives, uh, satisfy your particular objectives by what work steps they're going to do, what tasks uh, are, are in those work steps, what um, time is associated with that? What resources are required? And then finally, on the you see on the on the um, screen here, what are the deliverables? What out of each one of those work steps? What are the detailed uh, deliverables that will be under that work step? What do I get out of it? What does my organization get from that work step? What does my organization get from this project? What can I expect as a specific deliverable from that particular objective that I've set? 
So that starts to really help you. This is a continuation of the plan that we talked about. So how do we start to take this plan and start to move it out into the marketplace so people will start to understand what we're really trying to accomplish here and what this particular project looks like and what steps we're going to take and what um, deliverables we're going to get and how much time it's going to take. You also, on this whole planning process, you want to start to uh, identify and understand um, what time the whole project is going to take. What are the risks associated with this? What are some of the costs associated with it? What are my other, so this is over an overall project view of things too. So this is all the planning process. If you do these planning steps right up through this step number three, you're going to be much more likely to have a successful project because planning is very, very important. Now, when you're looking for an outside consultant, you want to also start to identify step four here. What are the requirements that a consultant has? What, are, what requirements are we looking for the consultant to have? So we've broken out into a couple areas here. First of all, the skills. What are the required skills that we think the consultant needs to do this particular project? What do they need to be skilled at? Do they need to be a project manager? Do they need to be a particular uh, vendor specific thing, uh, vendor specific knowledge? Sorry, do they need to know diversity and inclusion? What are those skill sets? What do they, what do, they do? What's their experience? Previous work experience in this domain. So how long has this particular individual done this type of work? How many types of these projects have they done before? Uh, what is their experience in here? And maybe even sometimes what are the um, types of projects they have and what are some of the roadblocks and challenges they've seen? So a little bit more on their experience and why uh, it gives us two things. It gives us an insight into the consultant themselves. It also gives us a little insight into the project, what to be expected from the project as well. What knowledge do we need them to have? What are those specific points of knowledge that we have if we're doing a training and development? Do they need to know knowledge of certain training programs or certain training technology or certain learning management? So what knowledge are, are in areas that consultant need to possess in order to do our project correctly? What are the other requirements? Do they have travel requirements or travel restriction requirements or remote requirements? Do you have certain requirements that they need to have um, to be able to do public speaking or uh, manage a project or, or talk to senior executives. So what are other requirements or expectations of the consultant that you're going to require to have to do the project itself? And then your selection criteria. So if you're going to choose a consultant, what are those selection criteria? You know, is it cost? Is it proximity? Is it all of these things included? Skills, experience, knowledge, other requirements. What are the summary of, a, of the selection criteria that you're going to go through to choose this particular consultant? So that's really important. So as you start to do your, um, just to summarize, as you do your project planning, project preparation, and you start to get the project type, the project overview, the objectives and deliverables, and then certainly the consultant requirements, then you can start to uh, understand how to go to market with these types of things um, and, and what the consultant needs to be able to provide to deliver on these types of things. Now, the uh, next phase, phase number uh, five, is key dates. So you want to start to think about, as you do your preparation and as you go to market, what are some of those key dates? Um, what is a target date? When am I going to uh, start this project? So right now it's February. You know, I might want to start this project April or May 1st. Okay, that's our target start date. When's the target end date? So I'm, I start uh, May 1st. I, I'm hoping this project is done by July 1st. So that's a target end date. I want to make sure that consultants understand I need to get this project done in this X amount of time or X amount of date. What does that look like? Sometimes there's project codes inter internally assigned. Um, your procurement department might have an internal project code or there's different project numbers. Make sure you want to capture that project number as well. When you send this out, this document out to um, the marketplace, you also want to have a queries uh, date. So when's the last time the consultant can ask questions? So you might want to give them a couple weeks to Look at your uh, RFS request for service. You want to uh, give them a chance to respond to that, give them a chance to ask some questions, and then that select date uh, when those end. 
when is the proposal due date? So when is a consultant responsible for getting that proposal to us and in what form is that? And then when's the project award date? So if they have the, you know, by March 1st, we want to make sure they have the proposal in on time. And then March 15th is the project award date, for instance. So you want to have these dates. There might be other dates that you have in your project um, that you want to put on the uh, RFS, the request for service. Just make sure you capture all the relevant dates that are important uh, to your organization in, in going through. And then lastly is the terms and conditions. And the terms and conditions could be any types of terms and conditions you put in place. There's a confidentiality statement, um, and there, there's a lot of different examples of that and templates for confidentiality statements. Uh, there's a right to amend, so you want to have the right to amend this. There's uh, different terms that say that you're not obligated to do the project, you're just looking for quotes. Uh, there's different things that say that uh, you will not assume any costs of a consultant preparing this particular proposal. Um, you want to have the terms and conditions of, uh, you know, what uh, payment terms you're requiring, um, you know, when the invoices are due, how you're going to invoice, all of those types of, and then the, all the legal work too um, that you need to put in there uh, for a uh, for the conditions and the terms of the of the contract itself, so the consultant can see that up front as well. So you, as you go throughout all of these. Um, you uh, are able to then put together your whole project plan. So just in summary, um, what I'll uh, uh, do is then you, you, once you get through that, then you go into the, in the, in the summariz, summarization of the final vetting process. So you might want to cast a wide net out to as many consultants as you can find. And um, it's, it's important to do that through networks and one of the reasons Work Mates Hub was built, by the way, but then we help you, or you should uh, vet down to two or three shortlisted consultants. So once you get down to those two or three shortlisted consultants, by the way, it's too hard to try to vet and choose from five or 10 or 15. You need to narrow the scope down of the consultants you're vetting and doing going through the final vetting process. So we recommend two to three. Uh, if you don't have two to three, you're probably at risk of choosing a, the wrong consultant, possibly. So the more choices you have, the better. Uh, but then when you get down to this final vetting process, two or three is all you really need to, um, to, to, to look at. And those two or three should be comparative against each other. And what you're really looking for is what we call price to value. What's the value they bring of all of those things that you asked them to do? And then what's the price of their services? And you do that comparative analysis along with some of the other things we're going to talk about here in a second to go through the final vetting process to choose the final uh, consultant. So uh, we also recommend simultaneous interviews. So you're going to want to be interviewing these consultants. You're going to want to physically talk to them. You probably want to um, uh, uh, interview uh, several different people in your organization you want to do simultaneous interviews with these uh, consultants. And you want to have a set of questions and some type of scoring mechanism or some type of uh, area, uh, some type of way to, to comparatively uh, uh, analyze the different consultants and in, in those questions and how you score them and how they answered and what their prices are. You want to have some general questions. Tell us about your background. Tell us about you know, how long you've been in business for, tell us about some of the projects you have, um, tell us about yourself a little bit. So, so just general questions about what that looks like. You also want to ask about their core services that the consultant is being asked to provide. Most consultants, individual consultants, sometimes firms, but individual consultants, most consultants have a, a core skill. So their core skill might be um, client-side implementation services on a particular vendor. Uh, but you're asking them to do project management, and they don't do project management. So you got to really hone down in what those core services you're asking them to do and have them explain what their core services are. They might do more than one thing. They might have some ancillary things, but there's generally one or two things that are core to what they do um, and, and core to what you're asking them to do and make sure that they explain that to you as well. Um, defining performance measurements. So we also want to <clears throat> start to help them uh, or help them help you understand what their performance measurements are. So how do we ensure success 
throughout this project by putting some performance measurements in place for that particular consultant. And how, what have they seen in the past? What are the performance metrics or me measurements have, have they seen in projects and what does that look like? And these general questions, by the way, are all about the projects they've done. And you start to, again, get a little bit more information about what the projects they've done, what they look like, and start to give you a sense for what some of the roadblocks blocks or risks associated with some of these projects might be. And we always recommend certainly reference checking. There's different ways to do reference checking. We recommend a few different ways and we'd be more than happy to share the details of that in, in, in detail. But it's really important to do reference checking and to actually talk to clients that they've worked with and talk to projects they've done and talk to, and then you get some more information about the type of project that you're doing um, that you're doing as well and some uh, advice and counsel that you might be able to get on that. So in summary, what it's really important uh, to do as you go throughout here is to make sure that you plan your project. You make sure that you get the right people involved. Make sure that you get the senior executives that you need involved. Make sure that you're uh, looking at all of the risks involved and the costs involved and the times involved. Make sure you set together a, um, a governance model. So what's that governance model that we need to have in place uh, to make decisions on there? What are the uh, project outline looks like? What are the risks associated with this? So all of the preparation before you even start to put together the project plan. Then you wanna to try to get into uh, more detailed planning of the project. What does the project uh, look like? What's the name of the project? What are the steps of the project? What are the, what are the challenges we're facing today? What are the outcomes that we're expecting when we get done with this project? How much time do we think this is going to take? Um, and all of those things in and around, as we talked about, the project itself um, and the objectives of the project and what you're trying to accomplish um, with this particular project. Once you get through all of the planning process, then you're ready to start to go out to market to the consultant community. And uh, once you define all of those things in your, in your internal planning and preparation and, and your project, spe specific project requirements, then what are you looking for from a consultant? What does that consultant, um, uh, what are the skills you're looking for? What are the knowledge you need in that consultant? What are the uh, requirements that you're having? What other characteristics that do they need or are you looking for in that particular consultant? And the more specific you can get, the more specific you can get to uh, identifying that within a consultant, the easier it is for you to shortlist those consultants as we've talked about. And then, you know, how do you make that final choice of that consultant? How do you uh, uh, cast a wide net so you have 10 viable consultants bidding on this so you have more choices to, to shortlist down to it? and get down uh, to the project. One of the things we didn't talk a lot about today, but it's really important is once you start the project, what are those things that you have in place? What are those milestones? What are those uh, deliverables, if you will, that you have in place that can help you track the successful outcome of this project as you go throughout? Um, and what are those milestone uh, times that you're gonna uh, take a, you know, if a three month project, you do it every two weeks, you do it every week, you do it once a month. What does that look like to ensure that you're moving along this path uh, from a successful project standpoint? And that's usually determined by the, um, uh, the specific work steps that the consultant has uh, uh, put in place for you, the deliverables you have, the task associated, uh, the timeline. So you start to judge the uh, success of the project along those lines as you go. Um, so that's, uh, you know, it's really important to do this planning, as I mentioned, to select and vet the correct consultants to help you out, and then to manage the process to successful conclusion. Uh, again, this is why Workmates Hub was founded. We do help organizations do this. Um, if you have any other questions about your individual project, uh, you have my email here. Um, yeah, just feel free to email me, reach out. I'd be more than happy to chat with you on the phone and uh, talk to you about your project and what you're trying to accomplish um, and very frankly see if we can help you out as well. Um, but um, uh, that's the end of the webinar today. Feel free to get in touch with me if you need some help. 
And uh, thank you for uh, participating today. We appreciate it.